Dual classes look like this, where you have too many public variables because you need to assign them values on initialization. Or you perhaps have too many constructors because there's lots of configurations of the object. Well, all of these problems can be solved using the builder pattern. It allows you to create instances of the objects like with the new keyword while keeping all of the member variables private and allowing you to create as many configurations of the object as you would like. Let's take a look at an example of spawning projectiles of different configurations. So I have the bad projectile class which is holding many variables we can set. All of these could also be set using a scriptable object. But in the case where we are not sure about how many configurations there are, or we just don't want to be configuring thousands of scriptable objects for each of the possible configurations, we may want to provide the values from outside. So in this case, just for testing, in the projectile spawner when we press W, I'm instantiating the bad projectile, adding the script to it, and then setting the damage, lifetime and the projectile effect. So this way you could definitely configure the projectiles as you want, but the problem is that all of the variables for that have to be public. Having public variables isn't necessarily bad, but in this case no other objects should really know about any of the properties of the projectile. So ideally you should try to keep it private if you can. So how could we make all of these variables private and still be able to set them from the outside? So for this we have the version 2 of the bad projectile. So now we have all of the variables private, but still there is just too many different configurations of the projectile. In some case we only want to change the damage. In some case we want to change all of the parameters. In some case we want to change only two of them. So if you would be trying to achieve that using the initialization functions as I have done here. So we have the function, you pass it in the value and that is being set to the variable. You can see you would have really a ton of them and it would be getting worse and worse as you would be adding more and more variables. So it would be near impossible to have function for each configuration. And if you would try to do it with constructors, you would run into the same issue. Now, you could definitely create just a one constructor where you would need to pass all of these values. But what if the projectile has like 10 different properties that you need to set? When you are spawning some basic projectile, you probably don't want to be setting the explosion radius, the effect, the effect radius and all of that. So ideally, we should be able to choose which one of the variables we want to set and which ones we can just keep on default. Let's now take a look at how we can implement the builder pattern. And because then we'll be creating instances of the projectiles using the builder, we probably don't want to allow the user to create them using the new keyword. So for that we can create private constructor. So now if in the projectile spawner we would want to say new projectile, you will see it's not going to allow us to do that because it is private. In most cases you are creating the builder class inside of the class itself. So inside of the projectile class, I will create new public class, which will be called just builder. Then in the builder class, we will have functions which will allow us to set the variables. Each one of the functions can set just one or multiple, that's up to you. So in my case, I will be using those three functions so that we can set the lifetime. Then we can set the damage, which will allow us to set well, the damage. And then also the damage multiplier, but I will make this one have a default value so we can set it, but we don't have to. The main thing about each of these functions is that they are returning the builder itself. And what this will allow us to do is that we can call, let's say, the with damage function. And because it will return us the builder, then on that we can call as many functions as we want and just chain them. This is probably something that you know if you are using the do between package, because there you can also chain as many of the functions as you want. So each of the functions can simply say return this, so that it's going to return the builder. And then we still need to set the variable somewhere. So for this I will create new instance of the projectile. So for this I'm creating new game object and adding the projectile component to it. If you are not working with mono behavior you can simply say new projectile. And then because this builder class is inside of the projectile class we will be able to set all of the variables. So let's say that when we try to set the lifetime we can just say projectile that lifetime is equal to the lifetime that we take in as a parameter. And the same way we will do it with all of the other functions. And this is it. You can see that each of the functions is pretty much identical. It is just setting a different variable on the projectile. But each of these functions can do much more. Really they can do anything related to the setup of each of the variables that you want. So we could also have let's say add effect function. Which would be adding one of these projectiles effect. But this would also add some component to the projectile itself. So when we add the effect of fire, it would add some fire particles, so spawn some object, it would add some component which would have some area damage, and so on. 
This is the simplest and probably the most useful version of the builder pattern. You can see that in the builder we are returning the builder itself, but we are not really returning the projectile, so let's make one last function for that. That function is typically called just build and returning you the product, so in this case it will return us the projectile. As I mentioned in the beginning, the builder pattern allows us to set the values of the variables that we want, so we can keep the others default, so for this it is important that you actually give them some default value. So this is everything for the implementation of the builder pattern. Let's now take a look at how we can use it, so in the project layer spawner I will simply set up some demo. When we press W I would like to create new projectile, so let's go into the projectile class, get the builder and we will need to create new instance of it, just like that. So now we have instance of the builder and we can call all of the functions on it, so we can say with damage, we can set let's say 50 for the damage, we also have the optional parameter for the damage multiplier, so we can set it but we don't have to. And if you want to create a simple projectile like that, where we only set the damage, then we can say dot build. So this is the magic. You can see it allows us to set only the values that we want. So later if we decide that we want to set something else, we can say dot with, let's say that we also want to set the effect, so provide the effect, maybe it can be poison effect, and then we can again say build. And if you put each of the lines, which is setting one of the variables on a new line, you can see it's quite readable as well. Let's check out if it works. So if I press W, we can see it is spawning the new projectiles. We can see all the variables are private. But still, if you want to see them, we can go into the debug mode. So we can see the lifetime is set to 3, which is correct, because in the script I didn't assign it value, so it is set to the default, which is 3. Damage is on 50, damage multiplier is on 0. That's because I accidentally set it here as 0 from default, so let's set it to 1. And we can see the projectile effect is set correctly as well. You can see that the builder pattern is really simple but really useful as well. And you can obviously customize it as you want. You don't need to take only one parameter for each function. Maybe you can take scriptable object. You can have some other functions as well. You can have constructors for the builder. Really anything that you want. So again, I suggest you to experiment with the pattern, try to make it fit your own project and just have fun with it. In relation to the builder pattern, you may also quite often hear about the director, which is supposed to kind of manage the builder. And all of this is really doing is that it is encapsulating some of the functions from the builder and returning the project straight away. So in this case, in the director, we could have a function like construct fire projectile or construct ice projectile, where each one of them has preset the builder. So in case of the fire projectile, we are setting the damage, the lifetime, the effect and calling the build. In case of the ice projectile, we are just giving it different values. Both of these functions could also take in parameter, let's say a scriptable object or something else. And then if you want to construct the projectile using the director, you can see it's a bit simpler because it is all already preset in the director itself. So we can create instance of the projectile director and then call the function on it. But you can definitely combine those two approaches, so when you need more flexibility, you want to have more control over the values that you give it, you can use this version of the builder pattern, and when there are some common configurations of the object, such as a fire projectile or ice projectile, you can use the projectile director to make it a bit simpler for you. Also, if you want to learn more from me and take a look at some more advanced topics, I've just enabled the memberships here on YouTube, so check it out. If you become a member, you will gain access to each of the videos about one or two days before they are out. You will also gain access to some of the additional extra videos for supporters, such as the last one which was about creating an advanced one bus. And mainly you will have the chance to support me so that I can live my dream life and continue doing what I love, which is teaching you about developing games and creating my own games as well. Let's sum up all of the pros and cons of the builder pattern so that you know whether you should use it or avoid it. One of the advantages is definitely that you don't need to make the member variables public or you don't need to have public setters, that you can just keep everything private. Also, there is no need to have many initialization functions slash constructors because all of that is handled by the builder. Also, the code is quite more readable than simply setting all of the variables because you can call the function and it's just more readable. And also, the builder is encapsulating the construction logic, so when some class requires some other object, it doesn't really need to care about how it is created, it can just call the builder. 
And for some of the disadvantages, I don't think there's too many of them. The only one I can think about is that it's going to increase the complexity of your project. Still, I don't think it is that big of a deal. That doesn't mean that you should be using Builder all the time. Obviously, use it only when it is necessary, when you need the flexibility of setting the different variables. Otherwise, if you can go with creating only one simple constructor or maybe two, then definitely go with that if it will make your life simpler. There is no need to use any of the patterns. And finally, to sum up, when should you use Builder? I think that you should use it when you need to dynamically create many variations of a class. Because if you have something like an item in your game, then you should probably preset all these items using scriptable objects. But with the projectiles, you don't really know what all of the configurations of the projectile will be, so it's probably better to just handle it dynamically. Don't forget to check out the memberships here on YouTube or on Patreon. I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions or suggestions, drop them down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye!